Domestic violence and emotional abuse are behaviors used by one person in a relationship to control the other. They may be married or not married, living together, separated, or dating. Domestic violence can happen to anyone regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, religion, or gender. A pattern of abusive behavior in any relationship used by one partner to gain or maintain control over another intimate partner. From April to August 2016, a study was done by the Family Violence Project in Augusta, Maine about domestic violence in the LGBTQQIA community. 131 surveys were completed by a diverse cross-section of individuals throughout Kennebec and Somerset counties. Some of the questions that were asked on this survey were, Do you think of yourself as? I'm straight. I am a hermaphrodite. I'm a woman, I'm transgender, I'm bisexual, and I'm female. I am a straight male. I'm also a straight male. I am a pansexual um, transgender. I am a straight female. Straight white lady. I am a gay trans boy. Um, I am a poly pansexual pan romantic gender fluid individual. I'm a pansexual non binary individual. I'm a trans, gay, queer dude. I identify as straight, but I believe that people can fall in love with anyone. And so, yeah, I, I identify as straight, but I know that anything's possible. I am a straight, cisgendered man. Mm, she, her, hers, I identify as a straight woman. I'm a gay male. A straight woman. I identify as non-binary and queer, and I use they, them, theirs pronouns. Um, I identify as a woman, as female. Um, I use my preferred pronouns that I use, or she, her, hers, um, and I identify as queer. I'm transgender. Uh -huh. I'm non-binary, and I'm female. I identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, and a woman. I am a bisexual woman. Uh, straight female. Uh, Caucasian, white, straight. Female, open-minded. Have you seen? Domestic abuse in the LGBTQ plus community. These were their responses. I have heard of it, but through news stories. I have heard that it exists as it does in any population. Yes. I moved to Maine to get away. It was not a situation to interact with. It makes me fear coming out more. I reported it to the campus police. I ended the relationship after eight years. I talked to the victim. I told her that's not the way a relationship should be. I did not know what to do and did not get involved. And that power imbalance started uh, from, the, from the beginning. And the first couple of years that we lived together were amazing. A year later, we had bought our first home and in a, in a whole new town. And uh, four months later, I was pregnant. And our daughter was born on May 5th, and everything changed. Um, the thing about having kids for us was that all of that stuff that I could sweep under the rug or brush aside or call something else, because I had all kinds of names and excuses for what it was, uh, couldn't be brushed aside anymore. There was a little screaming person that needed us and needed a cooperative relationship that didn't exist. I, th I think the best way to describe it is I got more and more opaque. Um, everything that I needed from her, everything that I wanted and from our relationship disappeared. She, she never hit me, but she was never present either. Um, and any time I called her out on it, it was me. It was because I was the more emotional one. I was the dramatic one. Um, I didn't have a right to ask for any, anything from her. Her only mission in life was to work and provide money for our family. And otherwise, all other tasks, all other responsibilities, everything in our relationship fell to me. Any time I needed anything, anything, a, a, a date night, as simple as, as that, or, 
or an, an emotional conversation, anything from her, she would um, refuse. And then, and then when I would get angry, she would she would turn that into me being crazy. Um, and I, I didn't have the words for it. Then I, I read about it later and realized there's this term of um, gaslighting, which is, you know. Uh, basically how I lived my life. I believed that that any need that I had was less than hers and less than my child's and less than anybody's and that I just didn't really matter. Any, any vestige of relationship disappeared. All intimacy, all relationship stuff that you think is pretty normal, affection, kindness, generosity, the stuff that you think that you're going to get in a relationship, she tied it all to my behavior. And if I didn't act the way she wanted me to, if I wasn't happy enough, if I wasn't bright and shiny enough, then I got nothing from her. And I remember this one time, you know, I was fed up. I was, I had this cycle, right, where I would, I would go into the bathroom and and sob into the towel and try not to let anybody hear because my kids were out, you know, in the, in the living room and she was there and then I would go back into the kitchen and I would do dishes because I wasn't looking at anybody so they couldn't see my eyes were all red and swollen and, and I was just, I was lonely, right? I mean, I wanted my, my wife. I wanted the person I considered to be my wife and, um, and she just didn't exist. She wasn't there. And and everything that I got back from her was negative. I was too emotional. I was too much. I was too needy. I was too expensive. I was the reason we were poor. I was never, ever enough. Um, or I was too much, but I was never just okay. I woke her up, and, and I remember sitting, kneeling beside the bed, begging her to look at me, to talk to me, to acknowledge anything that I was saying. And she just laid there and stared at me and ignored everything. And I think that was probably when I knew that I was never, ever going to be loved in my relationship. And that was three years before I left. Although there are many different kinds of domestic violence, it's important to keep in mind that there's a difference between domestic violence and disagreements, discord, or disputes in a relationship. Domestic violence is learned behavior. Domestic violence is learned through observation, experience, reinforcement, culture, family, and community. It is a thinking problem. It is rooted in the belief that my needs trump your needs. That I get to use hurtful strategies and behaviors to get my needs met. And when those legal forms of behavior stop working, I get to escalate to physical and sexual violence, and before long, I'm using violence without consequence. Domestic violence is not caused by substance abuse, genetics, stress, anger, illness, or problems in the relationship. Although these factors are often used as excuses and can exacerbate the violent behaviors of a perpetrator. Are you with someone who won't accept that you've broken up? Are you in a relationship with someone who puts you down, is critical of everything you do, and undermines everything you say? Are you with someone who threatens you, uses or owns weapons? Are you with someone who's violent and has a history of fighting? Someone who pressures you for sex or is forceful or scary in regard to sex? Someone who has threatened to out you to your friends, family, or your work. The seeds of this violence are born in the home and embedded in our culture and become painfully clear as they emerge in schools, at the mouth of students, and it arrives as aggressive, homophobic, transphobic, violent, and dangerously predatory language. They should go kill themselves. Bitch finally got it. Fairy, fag, training. Nice dress, faggot. Freak, faggot, dyke, it. Let's test if you're really gay. Who would ever want to date someone like you? You're just going to end up cheating. The language alone is violent, but then the students described events. 
Pushed into lockers. Pressured into sexual activities. Slapped. Punched. Guilted into having sex with them. He grabbed her arm. Had things knocked out of my hands. Held my throat as if he was going to strangle me. Pinned me to the floor. The students were asked how these abusive behaviors made them feel, and some of their responses were... Out of control. Humiliated. I don't fit in. Broken. I don't even know how to describe it. I had to go to school with my abuser, and it hurt, and I know there are girls here who do, and it breaks my fucking heart that they have to see them every day and get called names and have to deal with shitty home lives. And then the LGBTQ kids, me included, have to deal with bullying and offensive things and sexist teenagers and it's more than enough to make anybody want to leave this shit show and drop out and give up. It makes me fear coming out more. I hear about these things and wonder why adults never do anything about it. I wonder what privilege do people have to be so vulgar and degrading without consequence? I never want to be here. I hate it. When I walk through those doors, I'm not safe. I'm scared to be here. They have no boundaries. They know there are no consequences. And then the students were asked what they or their friends did to cope with the abuse. Cut myself. Stopped eating. Drank. Dropped out. Got high. Thought about suicide. I thought about suicide. I thought about suicide. I thought about killing myself. Attempted suicide. Attempted suicide? Committed suicide. I, I believed her, that I was the reason that we were failing, and I didn't want to fail. And I knew, I knew that nothing was going to change. I just knew it. And nothing did. I was dying. I mean, I was dying. Like, I had gone from feeling like I could make this work for my kids to recognizing almost overnight that all of the best parts of me had gone somewhere and everything that I loved about who I was and my boldness and my brightness and my loudness and the things that made me unique in the world had just stopped existing. I mean, I was an opaque version of me and I couldn't sleep and I, and, and I was miserable and I was lonely. The most common types of violence that survivors reported were physical violence, verbal harassment, threats and intimidation, isolation, online or telephone harassment, stalking, sexual violence, and financial or economic violence. We can begin to heal this wound by looking for the signs, by listening, by being allies. By helping to free ourselves and our loved ones from danger, be it physical, verbal, aggressive, microaggressive. Whether it be threats, intimidation, stalking, withholding food, money, or medication. If you think or feel that you're in an abusive situation, we're here for you. If you have a loved one that you fear is being abused, ask questions, show them that you're listening, and if you need to, pick up the phone and call us. There is always someone here. There is always a different way to live. If you are abusing someone in a domestic situation, we also have help for you. It is about slow change. It is about getting you to look at your thinking, your intent, and the impact your violence has had on your victim, your family, and yourself. Your actions will change when your beliefs change, and that is what we help you to try to do. There is never a bad time to call. There's never a bad time to call. There's never a bad time to call. There's never a bad time. There's never a bad time to call. 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 There's never not an alternative. There's never not a choice. We are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's never okay. It doesn't matter how old you are. Or which are your personal pronouns. It's not, I was just kidding, or I didn't mean to, 
or I won't do it again, I promise. It's not a joke. You may not use physical force to scare me. You may not punish me for any perceived wrong. You may not call me names. You may not isolate me from my friends and my family. You may not keep what I need from me to get what you want. You may not force me to have any type of sexual relations with you. Just because we are partners. Just because we are lovers. Just because we share a home. Just because I am your wife. Just because you are my husband. It's never okay. I can assure you, you are not alone in this. Pick up the phone and ask for the help that you deserve. Call or email our helpline today. First of all, you should know that you're not alone. I'm here for you, and you've got friends and people that you can turn to. It's okay. It's, it's not your fault. It's theirs. We can get help. You don't have to live like this. Sometimes people don't believe that intimate partner violence happens in same-sex relationships and queer relationships and trans relationships. Um, and I would, again, emphasize that I believe you regardless of what other people in your community or outside of your community um, tell you. And I would say that love shouldn't doesn't incorporate violence, love doesn't incorporate that kind of pain. I'd love to hold space with you so that we can find hope together. No matter what they say, never doubt your worth. Um, I really believe that you're already doing a lot of the work to stay safe and the minute that you decide that it's time to start thinking about doing something else and you wonder who to talk to or where to go, that's what we're here for. We don't judge, we listen, we provide resources and support if we can. Um, the rest is up to you and you're already doing it. You're, you're most of the way there. You're here with me now and I hope you feel safe with me and we're going to find some support and help for you. It is your right, it is your birthright to live without violence. My mother one day was just crying in my lap and told me that she was so tired of begging people to love her. And all I could do was just hold her and give her as much love as I could. I think the hardest part was A, walking away from that relationship and that situation, and B, acknowledging that it actually happened. But the support of my friends and my family, and I'm learning to support myself, has been one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. And I think it's important to note that even though it feels so hopeless and so miserable and so black that it really, there really is a light at the end of the tunnel and you just have to fight to get there and there are so many people around you that will support you and have you because you'll fall a lot. But just have faith in yourself and do everything you can to get to that light and it's, it's long and it's hard and it's a lot of work but leaving that situation behind is the best thing that you could ever do. I think the most important thing to remember about abusive relationships is that the abuse isn't always physical and it's not always out of malice or intention. People who love us are very capable of showing it in all the wrong ways and hurting us. And even if we want to help them and we want to see them change, we cannot put ourselves in harm's way to do it. Even if we think we're seeing real change and we think they just need a little bit more time, that's still time that they're hurting us. And people who love each other should not need a little more time to stop hurting each other. No one should be being hurt in the first place. Relationships should not be like baseball. No one should get three strikes. They get two strikes. They get one second chance. 
because they should not get to hurt you again. Because you matter, you are important, and you are worth it. You've always, always, always got to look out for number one. And that's you, baby. I found, I found help in some of the most unexpected places and, and strength in myself that I didn't know existed. Reach out. I promise people will listen and I promise people will see you. We 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 celebrate you. And we love you.